The Exchange on Deep Dive. Thanks so much for staying with us. Uh, that was the sounds of chronic uh, loneliness. And I hope uh, we're keeping you company as always on Capital 100.4 FM. My guests are in the studio as we delve into this very important conversation. Now, joining me in this conversation, I am joined uh, by uh, Samuel Wadzai. He is with Viset, that's a vendor's initiative for social and economic transformation. Good evening and uh, welcome. Uh, good to have you in the studio. Thank you so much, uh, Rumbi. Good to have you. Wonderful. Are we also joined by Councillor Wombarai Shenende, uh, wearing his hat this evening as the chairperson, the whole, uh, the entire chairperson, so I'm very excited about that, uh, of uh, the SME's committee for Harare City Council. Good evening, Councillor Nende, and welcome to the conversation. Thank you very much, Rumbi. All right, so I think it's important, you know, now, now we, you know, to know it out like a wand. Uh, maybe let me hear from uh, from your perspective, um, you know, Samuel, mm. representing the vendors. Um, we often talk about the role that the informal sector plays. It's a vital role. Uh, give us an update, perhaps, in terms of uh, the formalization. Mave mm. Papi, and how is this process going? Yeah, so I think you recall the last time that I came uh, to the studio, uh, we were talking about the working document that we now have, uh, the formalization st- uh, strategy uh, that was developed by uh, the government working in, in collaboration with uh, quite a number of uh, informal economy associations. Um, I think we are still there. Um, our hope was that uh, the, the, the document was going to be uh, taken to, to cabinet um, for finalization uh, and the, according to the last information that I had, uh, that process is yet to be completed. Uh, but we have a document which in my view, because as an organization we, we participated uh, in the consultations that that, that, that gave uh, you know the product, the document that we have. Uh, we're, we're quite happy with what we have uh, given uh, the fact that formalization is key. We need it as soon as possible not only uh for us as workers in the informal economy but also for our for our economy uh, the national economy we need to to create an environment where workers in the informal economy are able to grow and contribute effectively to the development of uh, the national economy so yeah that's where we are we are still waiting for for the actualization of the working document that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there were consultations. You know, for someone who might be listening for the first time, uh, Samuel, what is the vision? you know they were for, for our informal sector mm. when the informal sector is working properly what does that look like what is it that you're advocating for before i come to council and decent work uh, broadly you know uh we want uh, we don't want the running battles that we see we want decent work we want uh, infrastructure you know to be able to work from smart domains uh, we want to use technology we want to be supported by the government to use technology you know modern ways of doing business we want to look after our families, you know, working from safe spaces. And I think we, we, we just want to do things in a smart way. We, 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 we want to, you know, to be a modern country uh, that we, we, we should, we, 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 we are clamoring uh, to, to become. So formalization to me uh, means decent work, means uh, uh, respect of the rights of workers in the informal economy, means social protection, means, uh, you know, access to markets, link, creating linkages between the informal and the formal. Formalization means respecting the decision made by our mothers and our families, our, our sisters, to join the informal economy because there are limited opportunities in the formal job market, but we still need to survive. Mm, very important things that come out there. Councillor Nindi, um... I mean, I'll also start with the where are we now question because we have had this conversation in the past in terms of this policy coming to light, uh, the the graph to get to formalization in Harare, Tave Papi. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Rumbi. So, uh, like what uh, my brother here was saying with regards to the formulation of the document which inscribes the policy, uh, to operationalize that policy, there is need to have... Um, a strategic plan. The strategic plan is the city of Ferrari. It's encompassing a new way of thinking, which encompasses all things you were saying around issues of formalization. But it has to be hinged on uh, three critical pillars that we then look at at the city because we want to grow, formalize, and make sure that we inculcate a culture of uh, accountability 
in terms of the SMEs. So we are looking at infrastructure, we are looking at investment, we are also looking at compliance and enforcement. So a combination of those three pillars will then make sure that whatever we have as the city will be in line with ensuring that there's decent work for the informal trader from the micro level to those that you want to graduate into bigger businesses. So we are working in sync, uh, having conversations that we, we have a collaboration with the vendors associations. So you're singing from the same hymn book? Yes. Okay. Um, let's talk about, we talked about the future and what we're forecasting. Um, what are the existing policies currently, Councillor Ninde? A- and how do they support SME growth in, in Harare's informal trade sector? And how effective have they been? So uh, the existing policy document was adopted in 2023 uh, it came into into light but then like I was saying there has to be an operationalizing document and working framework which is now the strategic plan and uh, it is at, at technical level and at council level it has passed all levels but we are now awaiting stakeholder input which then informs a meeting that we are going to have with all the stakeholders uh, just recently we had a meeting uh, with the stakeholders but that meeting was uh, a reaction to what happened in Bari but uh, beyond that we are looking we also had to delve into some of the issues that we discussed around the policy but all those issues are going to be fused in uh, beyond uh, the Mbari scenario so that we get into the broader development in terms of infrastructure because what we have is a disequilibrium in terms of the the supply side of operating spaces versus the increment of the people that want to operate within the SMEs and the underperforming underperformance of the economy which has seen most of people going towards uh, small to medium enterprises for their survival. Uh, you talk about Mbari, uh, you know, very devastating what happened yeah. in Bari. Uh, as uh, as Vice said, um, you know, 4,695, I think, these are the ones on the books. I imagine it's more people who are affected. Uh, and I'm also, again, I don't have the figures, uh, but I'm also thinking that uh, quite a lot of these people were informal traders. Yeah. Um, how did you react to the devastation in Bari and what are some of the, uh, the plans there to assist vendors uh, to find, the, the, you know, their way back on their feet? Fantastic. Very important question. Um, I think uh, Councillor has just mentioned um, the meeting that we had last week. Uh, actually, uh, it was uh, after the request that we made as VSET to through the office of the mayor to to have that uh, stakeholder engagement uh, in the wake of the of the fire that destroyed livelihoods. Uh, we wanted to create a platform where we'll be able to discuss about uh, how to respond to, to, to the disaster in an inclusive manner, uh, to also to have an uh, appreciation uh, in terms of what the council is doing uh, to respond to that. Uh, and I think uh, two days before we had that meeting, that was when the government um, pronounced uh, that uh, they, they declared a, a, a dis- disaster, um, um, you know, to, to, to give way to uh, inclusive responses. Uh, so we, 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 we welcomed that as an organization. But I think what is more important is the fact that uh, through that meeting that we, we requested, we managed to bring everyone uh, together, all the key departments at uh, our city council, uh, so that when we respond to this, we are not leaving anyone behind. Uh, all those that were affected, uh, you know, should be supported. And key, there were a lot of resolutions that were made during uh, that uh, that meeting. Uh, key among them, the issue of ensuring that, uh, you know, our budgetary intervention or whatever funds that we are going to uh, to put on the table should be used to ensure that we safeguard the health uh, you know, and safety of workers in the informal economy, ensure that if we are going to create uh, uh, spaces to operate from right now as we try to, to, to build to rebuild the market we also take into consideration the health of the, of the workers that are that are operating in those spaces because we don't want another disaster uh, of course the fire came uh, but it can also be an opportunity for us to construct modern markets that are that are that, that are in sync with what what want to see uh, you know as, a, as an economy so it was an opportunity for idea sharing and I think as an organization we are so 
happy by the response that we received from uh, not only the city the city fathers but the national government in terms of declaring it a, a disaster so that help can come to those that need it dl councillor mm. nete you maybe want to add on that kuneva mwanga wa shiti isusu pamwe ee taka pisi ruwa ozu inu zaka tuira mo ticha wana uru batsiro hire kutitinge tichikwansa kuzo hoda zakare ne kuchaga upundu tu ok um my brother somehow you mentioned something which is very pertinent the issue to do with resolutions because at, at council we work with resolutions so we resolved in a joint committee meeting and we it was informed by also having gone out to understand what really did happen so that we feed into a a, a bottom-up approach so that we don't have boardroom solutions to issues that are happening on the on the ground so with regards to to that matter we resolved to say that uh, our city council technical guys are supposed to go and engage uh, financial institutions in terms of uh, getting them on board to come uh, and make sure that they help uh, recapitalize the operators that were working at um, Baram Sika, which go a, a figure which goes beyond 4,000. And uh, beyond that also, we said once we are going to have the development of that area, reconstruction, the reconstruction must be able to capture and ensure that all the people that were operating from the Mbari space are the ones that are going to be given first preference. Then we also develop a matrix and uh, which will be all inclusive to ensure that we remove most of the illegalities that are happening around that area. Our resolution also uh, looked at ensuring that the infrastructure that is going to be developed uh, from Mbari and beyond is going to be fire resilient so that we, go, we don't have a recurrence of uh, of uh, fires that uh, usually do operate do happen in those areas and the other resolution also spoke around the issue of ensuring we do away with land and space parents in the context of uh, of markets so that we have an equitable distribution of the marketplaces that we we do have then um uh, when we had sector specific consultations for the budget consultations that occurred uh, two months ago there were issues around women saying that we want to have a uh, workspaces that are inclusive uh, so that when we come to a workplace we also have an ability to have our children being taken care of so in the new development we are, we are going to ensure that there is a necessary uh, daycare so that women will come to work at the same time their kids are being taken off, care of so that we have an inclusive uh, way of mobilization where women are not left behind in terms of uh, capacitation. I, you know, I'm a big proponent of that. It's something very simple. Before you've even done a whole nursery, changing tables. Changing tables for, well, I understand because I have to change my babies all the time, but those are the small things that I hope are in your gender sensitive infrastructure planning as you go forward. Um, the, there's a big issue that you spoke about. You spoke about enforcement being one of the, uh, the three tiers of uh, how the formalization uh, structure should be uh, doled out, isn't it? That seems to be a big issue. Uh, the cat and mouse games uh, or the perennial running of people and so forth. Let's talk about the enforcement. Uh, is there a better way of enforcing? Uh, you know, how can we move away from these running battles? Yeah, uh, like, I, like I mentioned earlier on, our biggest challenge is the disequilibrium disequilibrium that is there so when we have lesser operating spaces and more uh, users we are bound to be having many people thwarting against and going against the pilots that are currently there that's where the running bus battles uh, come in then uh, generally you uh, last i think last time i was here i spoke about issue so everyone would want to go so you have everyone machine to congest a certain area in terms of market but we're trying to develop uh, a, a new thinking where we have my, 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 my industrial park my SMEs more where we, we have an encompassing of mixed use where then we can have everyone then so when you have a mixed use area let, uh, let, let's take for instance uh, it was, um, Papa Kate, bye -bye. you have you have parking you have offices and you have uh, SMEs that are operating bazaars. So there is a market that is revolving per one building. You want to create many uh, of such. So we are going to utilize my, 
ma bus rings edu kopa kabana you have um, market square you have fourth street you have um, a charge office we're going to develop them in a way that we have underground parking we also have uh, the skyscrapers that we encompass like like those who have traveled to SA they can understand kuti you when you come when you go to a mall you get to a, to a certain floor where you then a board of the the, the combis but that will be used as a rank but it is part of the mall but we want to develop it in SMEs so that we will know that this is an SMEs hub where we will then engage our working stakeholders together with um, the business sector and the government the ministry of SMEs so that when these mega SMEs programs are coming on board we will be able to absorb everyone so that our compliance and enforcement uh, will be having enough grounds enough capital to say we have designated these areas where everyone can fit in but this is a five year a, a, a development plan that implements that very same uh, policy so we are picking up from the from the previous a uh, budget that we had uh, 2023 uh, budget we have actually started on the day that actually the the, the day after the fire in bari we actually had a tour of areas that were supposed to kick start in terms of infrastructure development we went to sunningdale Uh, we got there with with our architects and we have uh, the material is already there what's now left is the groundbreaking ceremony so that we have a new market that is modernized and that can have decent work for the vendors but it's a whole a lot of uh of work that needs to be done I I was going to ask about the time it sounds like it's going to take a lot of time Samuel uh when you're looking at the time frames involved as well as some of the immediate needs of the sector that you represent is this adequate and also I want to hear from you on the aspects of anzi munopiwa pain sonzi garai papa as anzi vendors don't want to listen they're being unlawful they're operating from undesignated sites pam taka ndo pa vange vachida ndizweri Yeah, look, um, Rumbi, very fast. Um, but I think the most important thing here is to to understand good kanatisna uh, markets anokwana or ma designated spaces anokwana. We are bound to have these problems. Um, and I think that's why we embraced Isusu as visit uh the work towards uh, Uh, the rewriting of our policies that uh, that, uh, that that governs the operations of workers in the informal economy we supported because clearly you could see good there is a mismatch between the policies that we are using uh, and the economic realities that we are we are we are living in um for example the bylaws that we used to have they were basically criminalizing uh, street vending you can't criminalize street vending without uh, you know uh putting the lives of your people at risk um it's one thing to to search for order you know in our central business districts um but honestly we can't be prioritizing the beautification of our streets uh you know at the expense of the lives of the people so we we need to balance that Uh, and that, that that's why we supported these policies because that's exactly what they sought to do to to create a balance uh, yes toda kufamba pakachena but tingada here kuti tifambe pakachena vanhu vachinzi vari kufana nzara kudzimbauko we can't do that so we need we needed to to ensure that we push for the building of more markets so that vanhu vanobuda ma streets much on him wenda kundoshandira kuri kunzi vanhu vaenda kundoshandira but it is a natural market that's why it chiramba isusu kuti pano tsagwa ma markets e zvinongoitwa ni ma technocrats anenge ari ma offices kuharara city council process ro should be as far as possible inclusive so that you also get even ma views e ma vendors such na because tinge tichozivha kuti you know tika tikaenda pakadai hapa tinogona basirana ne city tichi tichi guta redu but we used to think about it as profits that's why working together is stuckers or not working together with the authorities is the only way to solve uh, problem so it's not that we want to be mischievous or kugo kungonetsa we obviously want to make money everyone wants wants to make money but we should be doing this you know together so that gutaredu tinori tinoti yara kachena concept yaya rumbi inonzi the right to the city inclusive cities planning and designing musaronga mega sema sema guta mukaronga mega manje mchi plana mega mtonotanga ita problem because 
munogona see a very important component in the economy and in this case mavenda i think and i think a lot of money is being generated from the informal sector uh, and i think the only way i kuti zvinofamba zvakanaka muguta medu de ku embrace the sector and help you know ensuring that things are done in an orderly manner without uh, violating the rights of others I see. So inclusivity, hands on the way, and fun on guys, don't go in that process. A big issue that I also want us to touch on, Councillor Nindi, is the issue of corruption and extortion within this sector how can you effectively address it you talked about space barons you also i, I also imagine there've been lots of stories that we've heard and so on let's talk about that how can corruption and extortion within the sector be addressed effectively yeah that is um so uh, if you look at how i package the pillars um they are open and cascading so that you get to compliance when you've dealt with uh, the other areas that you ensure could you know, eliminate uh, those things. Because what that really happens is when someone is at an undesignated area, they are bound to then have enforcement coming after them. When that happens, they will develop a system of paying. Uh, so wherever there is human interaction, there is that shred uh, inherent in human beings where people then start to look for my way out in terms of when there's enforcement, they pay my dollar, my two dollars, then it becomes a system. But at council, we then gave an instruction uh, just recently and very soon we are going to be having, uh, dealing away with familiarity. People are going to be rotated so that you don't see the same face operating in the same space because they will then create my hegemonic systems of institutionalized uh, corruption, where you understand Marie because that's how they will be operating. So when you do away with uh, such systems, you realize the crew that comes in to enforce, you have my recruits, you make them the bigger component of the people that are going to be working with EPU, then from there, you have to deal with it. But that those are piecemeal solutions to deal with the current situation. But the broader situation needs a solution it is based on having everyone operating at a designated area where you understand that in Arari, we have 4 million vendors. Uh, is found at Copacabana Market, vending store number 73. He is paying his rates up to date and he is actually graduating from being small to medium and we are shifting him from Copacabana to CSO, such things. Isn't uh, that a bit of sugar candy mountain? We need, to get it. We, we need to treat SMEs as an incubation hub so that we grow our businesses. I've always told people about um, Stillmate, Stillmate in Bari, pa, um, pa CSO pipeline. Stillmate started as small, but they have managed, could I say? to grow. If you go along Glen Eagles, just after Eaglesville School, you will find a big factory there where Stillmate is situated. He has outgrown being small and is now a huge uh, supply. So it should be that incubation hub, not an area where we have people that are not uh, willing to comply with Zimra, they are not willing to have uh, social security. When someone in that sector dies, you are looking for contributions from people around. It's not a sustainable way of living in terms of uh, decent work. Someone coming to you uh, for your response on that one. Um, how ready are SMEs, how ready are uh, the members of, of the informal sector, how ready are they to step up and to formalize their businesses, to register, to be tax compliant, uh, as well as technology? Are they receptive to technology? And uh, do you also share the same vision of uh, a technologically uh, driven and supported informal sector? 100% we share. We share... Um, uh, because we believe that that's the only way that we can be able to organize uh, the sector, uh, you know, and ensure that we we work from from safe safe spaces. So there is no doubt whatsoever in terms of uh, the thinking of the majority of workers in the in the informal economy. We need to regularize our operations. We need to work within the confines uh, of the laws. Uh, we need to support efforts. You know, to to transform our uh, our our operations, but I think we also need to be very careful uh, in terms of how we define 
uh, formalization and regularization. Um, in the majority of cases, I think I think we have seen authorities uh, using a very narrow definition of formalization to say, if we will give you uh, you know space to operate from, uh, and we know where you are, and we are able to come and collect uh, ten dollars per zua, then we have formalized you. Th- th- that's a very a very narrow. That's a very You're saying narrow. I just could go anywhere like that. Widen the scope. Yeah, so formalization is bigger than that. Formalization uh, involves issues to do with decent work, you know. Uh, Patrick Chandra Pachuna, you know, healthy facilities here, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, and it can, in terms of, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, social protection, and you know, what programs, what programs are you putting in place? As council to ensure that Mario Yamatora is ring fenced and protected against corrupt people that we know to you know so we are saying you know we were left exposed as workers in the informal economy everyone should be staying at home so can I take a safeguard the marids through formalization for social protection tino zwa kuti pakaita ma disaster se akaitika covid ya maria yaka protect i know to or why chibatsira chi ivanhu vari mu informal sector that's formalization nyaya dze infrastructure kuti muri kushandira hatisi kana chiti market atingore yungo isa shed ka urutaura zve technology kata kutaura proper proper markets tunawo pane nge pane wifi tirikunzwa mamwe ma service providers akabva kune dzimwe nyika hakuyawo kuzoshandira muno zvino zvanga zvakaita sokuderera e zvinoti batsira kuti tigadze ma markets edo anenge asa every vendor must have sterling ndo zvandanzo pana anditoona so so tete tete tika zvese izvo zvese kuti no kata kutaura zve infrastructure ngati chinozirega ikungomirira kungofunga kuti kati kaisa shed ndo infrastructure a a tino ma vendor takatoenda kuchikoro you know what i'm saying we know mm-hmm. how to apply these things yeah e, chatino kuda mukana kuti ti support ne authorities to be able to to apply these things so 100% we are in agreement we want to formalize but let's see let us not define formalization panye kungoda ngonombora mari eh from vanhu vari kuva ma vendor mari echo singazonoti no batsira si kukudza ma business so accountability hands msango collector chete i hope that accountability is top in terms of the key performance indicators we've got some messages from our listeners maruva anzi hi rumbi the government is moving uh, the city to mount hamden the plans you talk about are long term are you planning with what the government is saying in mind yes yes definitely uh, so what really happens we have uh, different departments in the city and the department of planning whenever there is a plan of an area we have commercial area we have a health area um, we act on the plan you have a designation for health you have a designation for education primary and secondary you have a designation for churches designation for commercial shops and the residential mabao uh, aripo eh that's the first thing that's the first thing mabao no tonze bawa re kanzuru eh just asking for a friend so anenge ari 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 designated in in that way but with that in mind we are trying to make sure kuti Uh, that cyber seat must actually depict a cyber seat from what my brother was actually saying there has to be a fusion of all modern and up to date uh, technologies in that area so that it 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 defeats the purpose of moving from uh, cbd to another uh, not so modern area if it, then we are going to have the same kind of infrastructure uh, like uh, what we, we are having so it means by that chance my vendors it aninga fana nga ita integrated in a system where they are formalized in a manner you know no bit um sdg number 11 the remote smart cities mm-hmm. okay so kuna uronga uri po umwe auya pana banzi nga vapiwe pekutengesera vachibhadhara anenge asiya tsvina mangwana anodzingwa vape imabine marara is this practical samuel uh, pane ari kuti hanzi ma uh, informal traders uh, vape pekutengesera vachibhadhara kana akasiya marara anobva abviswa ipapo eh uh, will this work you think uh, it's a suggestion from a listener it has to work it has to work ndo saka tichikurudzira isi makanzuro edu but tinogadzira mabudgets ngati dilene nawo idzodzidzi 
e eh, ano di wa mabini mu street sometimes tinogona zvedo ngo so tibukuzongo ya chiblema mavenda eh, because ndo vanenge vari mu uh, unyoro watinokwasa ngo ataka ipapo ipapo but uh, let's let's provide this uh, uh, you know amenities so that uh, tese tinobatsirana kuita kuti guta redu ringe ringe ringe, ringe rakachena so isuzu se organization atokurudzira vano ngo kanda marara pese pese ma members edu they are away of this through the various awareness campaigns that we have been running as an organization kuti cleanliness inongobatsira tsa haibatsire e guta chete kana kuti vakuru vekanzuro kuti vafare a a isusu but not shandira health is very important but even chi budget au sema kanzo let's take these things into into consideration in the education you know kuti to educate say ma 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 weka boss ma wekas and they are contributing to the local uh, gross domestic product ye guta red re harare so health education those issues we need also to prioritize but age budget and it answer those issues must come to the fore one last message before we wrap it up michigan sunning girl says yes we've been deep in zero can cancel a kuti sunning del mother papi pamur gutao rai papo and the tzive what you ever got it sunning del okay uh that's a very important question uh takava kusunning del atina musu after watch a kumbari and the following day we actually went there on a tour in SME's uh, committee with the city architects to have an appreciation of the area that is supposed to then be developed so um, uh, of course tava kwa kambo ita issues wa mwana wangu wa kufila out maybe tada kubiswa patrukuli patrukuli shandere but people must understand in order for development to happen there has to be certain movements zino itika pa mnei mchidi jishandere because we want to modernize a market that is already there so everything else is now the floor plan is there the, the 3d designs are, are there eh tangomira kuti vakoma na vedu vauye kuzodi kuzotanga kushanda vakatoenda pa district office pa vachingopinda pa gate on their left vakangopinda pa pa foyer vachanosangana ne e material ida kushandiswa ipapo vakatarisana pa gate ipapo pa side pe clinic vanenge vachitoona zvidina those that would be patient to passing the market that would develop and that tenders on cancel a patrick anzi cancel guy paper and jim puts it in case i'm my shed my own be a cover anzi anzi so far i would have runs by papa kona pa coca cola cheddar pa sigi road up do big up a cover aqua could honor tingy city anzi muzimba my shed a kanaka and anzi aga paga motor but i think that's uh some of the sentiments that uh, you had shared previously now as we bring the conversation to a close some of your parting shot on this very important issue kuneva katerira e pamwano tengesa wakana washita kubata na nemi kuti zunzwa zingi zaka rungeka what does the future look like for the informal sector we hope that we we'll finalize nyaya ye adoption ye policy in my view it's a very progressive policy and uh, i think the way that we uh, produced the policy was very inclusive taka participate as an organization but and i think what is now left is to ensure that we actualize it uh, to monitor kuti iri ku implementwa here tese you know to isa framework yoku monitor tese chibasirana kana pane pari kusaririra you know to ita tese so that uh, you know we we are able to help are the people that are surviving through the informal sector uh, thank you so much uh, samuel uh, councillor nende e eh, mashokanyo kupedzera kune vatereri vagare muharare the informal uh, policy informal traders policy and when it will come to light i i i always say um there's a gap in ongeri chi kavwa na na mkomo wangu samuel whereby they bring a zvino zvino diwa kuti tikwanise kugadzira former former vendors but from a practical perspective coming from us seeing things that are happen on the ground uh, always look at what we are going to be doing tomorrow what we are doing today and um maxeni takanchiverenga nyaye yelanina ya yekuti kuchange kuchuya heavy water in flooding uh, it is my call kuma vendors nepa vanenge vari but when the flooding starts people will start to blame like you are saying kuti undo vanenge vari pa unyoro une kuti vanhu vanokwanza kuti mavendors ndo ari ari wrong so let us make sure kuti patiri kushandira taita utsanana in terms of uh, refuse because marara mukagocha chibage over what's ya marara cho ari po otoro opina drainage ono blocka then totanga kuita intermittent flooding so mavendors this is a very serious issue especially in rain season ya ta copied so that it no kwanisa kuti mira from a police perspective it should defend the existence and could be enforcement vanozoya vakumhanya because we have also failed 
Kudila Nishio. So please, as you get into the rain season, let's make sure from wherever we are working, designated or undesignated, let us make sure kutitukita utsanana as the primary thing. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And you know, so you're punishing me, so I wonder. Uh, so you know, Kwanza Kuramba, she's going to kuru kuru ask kwa nasi, and of course, to gumira pano. Man's waka kutupani urongwa uripo vano tengesa ma venda kutanza zinshukuna kire to formalize to also have technology to have decent workspaces. Starlink. 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 Ne Starlink. Kunema vendor. It's a hashtag Starlink for all the vendors. Many thanks to my guests this evening, Kanzala Wombarayishen, as well as Mr. Samuel Wadzai. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And we will continue to talk about this very important subject in the days to come. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, wonderful. Cheers. Now, with that, uh, it is uh, two minutes past eight. It's time for the news. Dollar salary is just $300. So it's not true to say if you put pegs of about $3 ministers you can pay fees uh, for four ministers you can actually pay fees for uh, 20 students it is not a reflection of uh, the truth our salaries are in the public domain everyone knows and Audra Bushidua, you are a member of the ruling zano pf party mm. and the zano pf blames everybody but itself i would like you to respond before we conclude on how zimbabwe can move forward in light of the sanctions <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Linda. You see, the good thing about the uh, SANPF and the SANPF government is we follow the rule of law. What we have done is to allow the separation of powers. The courts, they do their work. Executive is on its own. And then the legislature. So the issue that you mentioned about Mfumira... We've got Kagonye, she was there. We also have got uh, members of our 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 ZANPF who are already there, even now as we speak. And uh, this, we are saying we are allowing the court processes to go through the full course. So, in as much as uh, for him, as someone from the from the opposition. Yeah, it's his democratic right to say that. But I would do, say is, as a party, we have done well to make sure that we allow the separation of powers. Those who have been found guilty have been sentenced. And the party has no role to play there. We allow the courts to, to, to play their part. Then in terms of salaries and allowances, I was there in the executive. What Dr. Mahomba said is what is there. Even for me, when I was there as a deputy minister, first I was shocked to say, are you saying this one is just for this month or I'll, I'll get another one later? And then they said, yeah, that's your salary. And that's what is there. There's nothing. I think, honorable, I once told you, yes, there's nothing. What is there? When you are appointed, you are appointed to serve. You are there. Kwanza mazimota yaninga chungo tenga. Conditions of service. Me mgadok pinto la tishipeta chirongo wa wiv. Shu 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 ali kenu we do basara government ne ine mafit. I I think that's part of conditions of service. Yeah. So I think. Yeah. Sometimes we come up with the trivialities. But otherwise, I think what is there, those who are in government at the moment, to the best of my knowledge, they are just there to serve. There is nothing extra about the, about the conditions of service that are there. All right. My yeah. final question, Raguta, how do we move forward in light of my sanctions? Well, I think um, the political parties here represented uh, should follow our lead we were the first ones uh, as i've said to stand against sanctions that's point number one but coming closer to home i think our priorities are misplaced and until we concede that you know we can talk all the nice things that uh, we can say but the fact remains the same that is for, is, is for as long as we uh, have misplaced priorities look we are not going anywhere tune into the life-changing radio capital 100.4 fm
The Exchange on Deep Dive.